So I've just finished filming my 10 least favorite books of 2023. And then all I did was change into a different color top of the exact same top that I was wearing and just like in a different shade of gray. So yeah, this is different. Let's talk about my favorite books of this year. This was a really good reading year for me. Uh, there was a lot that I had to choose from for this, which is always very exciting. So I am going to talk about a couple honorable mentions, but I'm going to hold off and talk about them halfway through the list. So let's just go ahead and get started with my number 10 book, which I actually have right here. And that is In Ascension by Martin McKean's. McKean's? don't actually know. This book I've talked about a few times I feel like and I've got another video that I filmed a while ago but I just haven't like edited it and posted yet or I'll be talking about it again but In Ascension follows this young woman who is in the science field and she's on like different large projects throughout the book so each part kind of focuses on a different project that she's on. The first one is like out in the middle of the ocean where there is this very deep trench kind of like the Mariana Trench and they've got like some weird readings happening there and so they want to do like some tests, run some tests there. She's also got some like family trauma that she's kind of grappling with that you get to hear little bits and pieces about as the story goes on. There are like these family aspects but really the focus is on her career but I think that that's it's done in such an interesting way that I just really haven't seen before where like yes she is being kind of pulled in two directions but she more chooses and more follows along the path of her career and what like a difference or what an impact that can make. It shows that there are like multiple ways to live a life and reasons why somebody could want to do something or want to move one way versus another and that that can be okay too I guess. Additionally it's just so great with atmosphere. The, the atmosphere throughout this book is done so wonderfully and to be in this story I, I really loved being in this story. Number nine was I thought I had this one. I found it. <laughs> Number nine is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. So this is my year of just falling in love with Ashley Winstead's writing. I've read all three of her thrillers, but The Last Housewife is about a cult. So the main character is this woman who is living in Texas, but went to school in the Northeast somewhere. And while she was there, while she was at school, she was a part of something that was maybe not the best, uh, but you don't really know too much about it until like going further through this story. Also, she's got an old friend that she went to school with who is doing this podcast and she kind of like reconnects with him throughout this mystery and the mystery or what's the uh, inciting incident I guess is that one of her old friends that she was a part of this group with has supposedly taken her own life on campus at the school that they used to go to at the college that they went to but there are some circumstances around it which maybe it seemed like she didn't do it herself so the main character of this and her old friend like want to go figure that out i sorry i forgot what her name was it's shay so shay and her old friend want to like figure out what's going on and then throughout that we dive deeper and deeper into shay's past as well as deeper and deeper into something currently going on, like very currently going on. I read through this so quickly. I had so much fun reading it. It's a part of a reading blog that I did. So if you want to see like more of my thoughts while I was reading it, then definitely check that out. So yeah, I just, I had so much fun reading this one. Uh, I mean, dark subject matter for sure. I, I always struggle because so often I'll say, oh, I had so much fun reading this book. And it's like about a thriller or something with like very dark subject matter. But you know what I mean. <laughs> And then number eight was The Bandit Queens by Perini Shroff, I want to say. This book was nominated for the Women's Prize and it's about a woman who everybody thinks has killed her husband and everybody kind of like stays away from her for that. But then one woman is really dealing with some difficulties with her own husband and then she comes to her and is like, I need help killing my husband. And it kind of goes from there. Uh, but what I really loved about it is the main like female group that comes about as a result of this and these women that are kind of finding power where they can in the system that they're in and the culture that they're in and like sticking together through that. It's, it's really beautiful. It's a really beautiful story. It's a little bit silly just because of like the subject matter of it. But I think that that kind of, I don't know, it adds to the charm of the, of the book. I really enjoyed it. And then seventh on this list is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. So yes, she has made it twice onto <laughs> my top books of the year. In My Dreams to hold a knife is about 
let, let me find her name first, Jessica. So she is going to her 10 year uh, college reunion. And she was kind of like a part of this group that was like well known by other people, but there was a murder that happened within that group. Things kind of like fell apart after that. And so when they come back together, we're getting a, the classic dual timeline that you get whenever there is like a reunion uh, in a thriller, which is what's happening during the reunion and also what happened in the past, like leading up to whatever the incident is and the incident itself. What I think she does so well for something that follows what a lot of thriller books have, have followed in the past is that she does such a good job with the release of information and these like little twists or new ways of looking at things. Just a lot of moments of not necessarily like, oh my God, I can't believe that that's what just happened or uh, I didn't see that coming or, or whatever, but just a lot of moments of being like, oh, <laughs> like now I need to rethink about what I was thinking about from this perspective and like continue forward. And there are bigger reveals that happen as well, but just, it doesn't feel like, she doesn't do it in a way that feels like gimmicky or anything or that like you couldn't possibly follow this thread, but that just make the whole reading experience really enjoyable. And then number six on the list is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I'm so glad that I finally read this. This is set in a New England college and follows this boy, Richard, who is going to the school from California. And then there's this group of students that are like always together and kind of outliers to the rest of the school that are all within the same like Greek program. And Richard, decides that he like really wants to join this program, but it's a very like isolated program within the school. And it's very like pretentious and like, I mean, there's a reason why this book is associated so much with dark academia. It like fits it so incredibly well. It will definitely give you those vibes if that's what you're looking for, like this book has them. But also there's this aspect of the story, you know, right at the beginning um, that somebody within the group dies, you know who it is. I won't say it just because I still think that that's kind of a fun reveal, even though it happens like just a couple pages into the book, but you know, like who dies and you know that all of the people in the group besides that person are partially responsible. And so right off the bat, you're wondering like, how did the group get to that point where like, that's what they did and like what happens from there and like all this stuff. So the rest of the book kind of, you're just like learning about that, learning why it got to that point and then what happens afterwards. And it just does such a good job of it. I loved being in this book. Again, atmosphere, atmosphere, atmosphere. And it also says a lot about like class, about religion, about uh, many different things. So yeah, fantastic book. Okay, so now that we're at the halfway point, let's do just a couple quick honorable mentions. First is A Fine Balance. I just couldn't not talk about A Fine Balance. It it's, it's such a lovely book. I think that I just read it too early in the year at this point that I just don't remember it enough to really talk about like how impactful it was for me while I was reading it. And I almost I wanna read it again at this point because I remember the feelings that I had while I was reading it. And it's it's sad. It is, it is kind of a tough read for just how sad I was while reading it. But I can't remember like the things that happened enough to feel like I could really talk about them well and have it be a part of the list, if that makes sense. So I just, I wanted it to be included in this video in general. I did really love that book. I have very fond memories of reading the book, but I do feel like I need to read it again. <laughs> then we have Time Shelter, which was on the International Booker long, actually it won, it won the International Booker this year, but it touches a lot on memory, on Alzheimer's, on people liking the time period that they grew up in the most and like why they connect so much with the, that time period and on history, on stories, on, which is a lot of things that I just, those are themes that I really like in books. I love memory being a theme in a book. So I think that Time Shelter did a lot of that in a very unique way that I thought was really incredible. And then we have Black Butterflies, which was nominated for the Women's Prize. The main character in it, I just loved so much. Her evolution as the city around her was having its own evolution or really just degrading and slowly like collapsing more and more. But to watch her in that and her connecting with the people that were also there, the rest of the like the town around it uh, and the imagery of the black butterflies, which was just like ashes of books that they were burning, falling through the sky. It's just, it's done so well. <laughs> and then lastly, I feel like this is gonna be a little bit of a shock to people, but I have to mention this as an honorable mention. Fourth wing. <laughs> Fantasy was a genre that I really liked growing up and then I just didn't really read much from for a long time, but I've just heard so much about this one. And then I found out that the uh, people in it ride dragons. <laughs> 
And I was like, you know what? That sounds like a lot of fun. And I knew that there was a romance in it, which I was like, I don't think I've ever really tried. Oh, okay. Avatar. But there's something that feels very different about that one than something like this. I feel like this is a lot more accessible. The world in it is explained so much better, I think. Uh, also, the main characters, I think, in it are done a lot better and you care for them a lot more. They're described really well. I remember like each one of them a lot better than I think I remember the characters of the Avatar series. So I think that this one just made me realize that like, yes, I think I'll like even more fantasy outside of just this book. Uh, not to mention, I just had a super fun time reading it the whole way through. I do know that people that read a ton of fantasy maybe don't feel as favorably about this one, but for me, somebody who doesn't, uh, this was a great way to get back into the genre and I can definitely see myself reading a lot more. I have Iron Flame now actually behind me, um, so I plan on reading that very soon. And yeah, I just, I had a great time and I'm, I'm just so glad that I like gave it a shot. So I, I had to talk about it. In fifth is A Spell of Good Things, which is another book that came off of the Booker Prize list this year. Not enough people are talking about A Spell of Good Things. I love A Spell of Good Things. It is about two characters, like it follows two perspectives. And I believe it's set in Nigeria. One is from a more affluent family or not even really affluent, but I would say like more middle class, upper middle class. And then the other is from a poorer family that's struggling a bit more. And you get to see their perspectives and the things that they're struggling with. But what I really liked was the more like affluent family. That one's focused on a woman and the things that she struggles with as a woman, how like basically her whole life, she's just being like molded into being the perfect wife, how her husband, her future husband that doesn't even like exist in her world yet because there's not actually like a man there for it. It's just like this hypothetical future husband that she's being like prepared for to be taught your entire life that you're just being created to be the best version you could be for somebody else, for like another human person is crazy to me. And I think that this book really portrays that. Okay, at number four, we have Study for Obedience. So this is also, uh, this also came out of the Booker shortlist actually for this one. And I loved it. Uh, it's a very weird <laughs> book. So we have like this, the unnamed protagonist who moves in with her brother, at, but she's living in a place where she doesn't speak the language and also nobody talks to her and everybody's scared of her, which likely comes from a place of anti-Semitism because there is like a lot of allusion to that without like outright saying it. But there's definitely some scenes where like, you know, there's anti-Semitism. So I think we can like assume that that's like a large part of why like no one's talking to her. But then like our main character is like trying to be this like perfect version of like what she could hope for within this community, which is heartbreaking. It's very, it's very sad to like see that and read that. But then as you're reading the book and as you're getting further along, you start to question whether you can really trust her as a narrator, but also I think it plays with what you want as a reader and like what you want from her and what you want her to do in a way that I can't really explain without like ruining it, but it is it is quite the reading experience. Okay, in third place, we have The Other Half by Charlotte Vassell. This one came out of the blue for me. Like this, this came out of nowhere and just somehow amazed me and wound up on my third, in my third favorite book of the year spot. Like, how crazy is that? I have never been hooked on a book so quickly as this one. And it's not even like, it doesn't like start with this huge bang or anything, but it was just written in such a way that made it so readable. And I just, I wanted to be reading it like all the time. <laughs> it's a mystery book that is focused on this woman that is found dead in uh, the park. I wanted to say Central Park, but actually I think that this is set in London. <laughs> there is a detective that's looking into it. Also, I don't even typically like detective novels all that much. So like <laughs> when I say that this was just so random how much I loved this book, Truly. But yeah, so this detective is like looking into this case, but it, it deals so much with like this class disparity and how like untouchable the rich are, how there can be like things associated with them and with their name and it not really matter. And the differences between them and the people that are maybe not as well off. And I just, I think that it does a great job of it. It's set up in a way that you truly don't know like what characters are going to do. And like, even though you want them to do like the smart thing, you understand why they're not. And you're worried for them in a way that I can't say that I've worried about characters in many other novels, specifically like mystery novels. I, I just think that she did an incredible, and this is a debut. I can't talk about it enough. Okay, number two 
is Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. Oh no, low battery light. Okay, let's see if I can get through this. And now Scout wants to get out. So actually, I think I'm gonna have to finish this later. Hi, I'm back. So uh, my battery died before I was able to talk about my last two books, my favorite books of the year. So I'm back with the full battery here to talk about it. Okay, so my second favorite book of the year was Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. I've talked about this book quite a bit. I read it for my Ted Lasso season one video. The season two video is still coming. It is. I just still have two books left to read from it. So this is uh, basically about like writing and life in general. So it's tips for like writing more, but it's also just like tips about life. And since reading this book, I have like wanted to write. I have barely written anything, but just like as a creative outlet, I've like wanted to do that, which I haven't wanted to do since, I, I don't know, for about like six, seven years, but I used to write like short stories and stuff and that was really enjoyable to me. But I just kind of stopped <laughs> and like there wasn't any real reason for it. I just, I just wasn't doing it anymore. And then once you're out of the habit, like you just don't do it. But I was kind of okay with that. I was like, well, I don't think that I'm like the type of person that likes to write all the time. But like reading this, I was like, maybe I do kind of miss writing. And I like the approach that this takes for it because while it is like good advice for people that like want to be writers, I also think it's just good advice for like people in general. Like if writing is just like an enjoyable thing to you, like, and you're not planning on sharing it anywhere. Like one of the things is just to, you know, if you, if you don't know what to write about, just like try to write about an old memory that you have, like just a random old memory, write it out. Uh, it can be like as accurate or inaccurate, you know, cause you can play with it and like make it something new. And then that's just like, it doesn't have to have a beginning, middle and end, you know, it doesn't have to have a climax. It doesn't have to have anything. It's just, it's for you. It's like for enjoyment to have fun. But yeah, I think that something that could make me <laughs> want to return to a hobby that I didn't even really like think about ever, that's a good book. And also it, it truly does have like lessons that could apply to life as well as writing. And then my top book of the year is Elsewhere by Alexis Shaken. So this was a nominated for the Carol Shields Prize, which is new this year and it was shortlisted. So this is about Vera who grows up in this like small town where when women eventually like have children, they could disappear after that. This is like a phenomenon that happens in this village. Like a woman will have a kid and then will disappear at some point later. It doesn't seem to be like any rhyme or reason, but the cool thing about this book is that the characters in it are seeking out reason. So when somebody disappears, they start looking back and thinking like, oh, maybe that was a sign or maybe this is a sign. But also it breeds a lot of paranoia to anybody that becomes a mother to begin with. Also this village is very isolated from the outside world. So that's where the title of the book comes from. Like everywhere else that's outside of the village is considered elsewhere. So Vera, our main character, ends up having a child child and then we're seeing her start to get a little bit paranoid about this and then it kind of goes from there. There's so much more to it but I can't really talk about it because it would really ruin the reading experience but it's so good and it's like it's a short book like you should if you haven't read this book you should read it. It's so good. Anyway thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know what your like top three favorite books of the year were. I learn about a lot of books from the comments of my videos or I learn more about a lot of books that I'm already like kind of interested in so that really helps me whenever I go to any bookstore and I'm like oh I, somebody's told me about that. I should read that. And this is the best time of year for it. I love being reflective and I love goal setting. So really just this time of year it's the best. Anyway thank you for watching. Consider subscribing if you want to stick around and I will see you in the next one. Bye!